Coming up, a traffic violation stop leads to a drug bust. And a robbery takes place at a local subway. We'll have these stories and more. Your News About Austin starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Camille Pollitt. And I'm Robin Carter. The Valdosta Police Department has made yet another cocaine-related arrest. This marks the fifth in a series of drug-related charges here in the city since the weekend. News Valdosta reporter Allison Thorpe has this report. Over the weekend, the Valdosta Police Department made their fifth cocaine-related arrest in a week. Around midnight on Friday morning, the police made a traffic stop in the 700th block of West Mary Street. According to Lieutenant Kirk, they discovered 3.6 grams of cocaine in small baggies. 20-year-old Quishan Newsom was arrested and charged with the possession of cocaine with the intent to distribute. Four other cocaine-related arrests have been made in the previous week. The first occurred on October 2nd, where two men were arrested with the possession of marijuana with the intent to distribute and possession of cocaine with the intent to distribute. Two arrests were made on October 3rd, the first being a man and a woman who were charged with the possession of marijuana, cocaine, narcotics equipment, and a firearm during the commission of a crime. Police also discovered a vacant house on 614 Hudson Street where they discovered cocaine, hydrocodone, narcotics equipment, and more. On October 8th, a suspected coke dealer was arrested and, and the police confiscated about $400 worth of cocaine. For your News Valdosta, I'm Allison Thorpe. Valdosta police say to two restaurant employees were robbed at the subway off North Ashley Street yesterday. The employees said an African-American man entered the store with his face covered, pulled out a handgun, and demanded money. The offender left on foot with an und undisclosed amount of money. Officers responded to the area, and a Lowndes County Sheriff's Office K-9 attempted to track the offender, but he was not located. Police say no one was injured during the incident and that a search remains underway. A simple traffic violation stop has resulted in the arrest and charges filed against a Valdosta woman. The 24-year-old woman allegedly ran a red light and then was pulled over by a Valdosta police officer. The investigating officer said the woman not only had a driver's license violation, but she also was in possession of marijuana. The encounter led to her arrest, leaving the woman with counts of running a red light, a driver's license violation, interference with an officer, and possession of an illegal substance. Early voting kicked off yesterday with lots of people showing up at the county elections office to select who they want as their governor. U.S. Senator and Lowndes County Commissioner Reporter Tevin Williams has more. Early voting has already kicked off and is in full swing at the Lowndes County Board of Elections. With many people already showing up for early voting, the turnout has turned out to be very great for the Lowndes County Board of Elections. With voting starting on Monday, many people are showing up and casting their votes for who should take office for the Lowndes County area. The Lowndes County Board of Elections has been preparing for this election for the past five months. Among the many voters coming out, some are voting for their future. With the county commissioner election showing a lot of attention, many people are showing a lot of concern for who gets that title. Well, I came out to vote today um, because I'm um, concerned about my future as well as my kids' future. And I brought my son today to let him get an example how it goes and stuff and what can happen when you don't vote. I think it's very important that you know we vote. With many people participating in early voting, this election is showing a lot of prosper. Voters are allowed to vote all the way until the last day of October. And there you have it. Voting is kicked off this week with many in attendance. Voting is a serious American right that everyone in this country has and should definitely take advantage of it. If you have any questions, you may contact the Lowndes County Board of Elections about dates or voting times. With your news Valdosta, this is Tevna Williams. The Valdosta Regional Airport is one of nine airports in the state classified as a level three airport. That means it impacts the region's economic output significantly. 
Last week, the Florida Department of Transportation's Aviation disclosed that the Tallahassee Airport has a total economic output of more than $399 million. In comparison, the Valdosta Regional Airport records $25.1 million in total economic output, which is proportionally just as strong. Researchers say Valdosta's airport is one of the biggest economic drivers in South Georgia. The Lowndes County Commission will meet at 5.30 this afternoon to reconsider a popular right-of-way. The county is looking to rezone 2.6 acres of land located near Madison Highway. Now it's having second thoughts. The county ruled on September 23rd that the right-of-way no longer served any kind of public purpose. A few other topics of discussion on the agenda include a look at county gas pump replacements and grant renewals. Coming up next, gas prices in Valdosta fall below the national average price. So stay with us. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. What will you find at Valdosta State University? Challenging academics. Innovative hands-on experience. Over 100 fields of study. Engagement in a vibrant community. Caring mentors and friends. Service and leadership opportunities. Championship athletics. The full university experience. At Valdosta State University. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Gas prices dropped over the weekend in Valdosta and Lowndes County, and that's good news for drivers. According to the American Automobile Association, last month the average price for a gallon of regular gas was $3.21. Since then, gas prices have fallen to $3.07 on Sunday and continued to decline. Today, gas prices remain at a low of $2.88. The Ebola outbreak in West Africa and the United States is leading to increased emphasis on safety precautions, and now that's the case in Lowndes County. The South Georgia Medical Center says it's using a newly developed Ebola screening tool, as well as its medical campuses, to screen all patients. The tool is available to members of the medical staff for use in offices and clinics. Symptoms of the virus include fever, skin rash, red eyes, and weakness. According to the Cancer Institute, rehabilitation and regular follow-up care are important parts of treatment for patients with head and neck injury. The South Georgia Medical Center is holding a head and neck support group for people who have been diagnosed with cancer of the head or neck. It is open to those who have completed treatment or are still active in treatment. The group meets on every Tuesday at 2 p.m. and will continue the rest of the year. To register, call South Georgia Medical Center. Now, the Hayhira Honey Bee Festival is over, but the memories linger on of the Parks and Recreation Authority's most popular event. Xavier Hall has this report. I'm up early this morning for the Dixie Cream Donut Dash in Hayhira, an event hosted by the Vadasa Lounge Parks and Recreation Authority. Let's see what this tasty sounding event is all about. Sponsored by Dixie Cream Donuts and the Vadasa Lounge Parks and Recreation Authority, the Donut Dash and Century Ride is quickly becoming an energetic staple of the Hayhira Honey Bee Festival. The race started at 8.15 a.m. at North Lounge Park and consisted of four different race routes. The most popular route was the 30 mile, which has a donut optional choice. There are also 15, 63, and 100 mile routes with rest stops placed evenly throughout. All the donut eating participants received a special sticker that lets the timekeepers know to take five minutes off of their race time. 
Jessica Catlett spoke to me about some of the health benefits of the Donut Dash. Even though we have incorporated donuts into the event, um, it is still a bike ride. So, of course, these riders are getting the benefits of the physical exercise being outside. They get to experience um, a large area of rural South Georgia. The ride is a, a beautiful route and takes them through a lot of different places. Now, there's also the social benefits of the Donut Dash, which allows riders to meet and converse with each other while also riding with people from previous events. All participants received a t-shirt, a light lunch, and of course, plenty of donuts. As part of the 2014 Honeybee Festival, it looks like this year's Donut Dash is another success. Xavier Hall, News Valdosta. WG Nunn Elementary School will host a fall carnival Thursday evening that will be full of fun, food, and games. Armbands can be purchased for students to play games, rock climb, get their face painted, and more. Tomorrow is the last day for our bands to be purchased, but don't worry, tickets can be purchased the night of the carnival. Thursday is the last day to purchase tickets for the second annual Bethune Leadership Banquet hosted by the National Council of Negro Women Incorporated of Adosta Lowndes County. The banquet will honor women in high school, college, and from the community for their dedication, leadership, and commitment to community service of Valdosta Lowndes County. The banquet takes place on Saturday at 6 p.m. Tickets are still available and can be attained by calling the local office of the National Council of Negro Women. Students of Genesis Christian School will attend a mock trial on Friday morning at the Valdosta Municipal Court. Students will learn about the penalties of making poor decisions. This event is set to educate and encourage young people to make positive decisions and lead constructive lives. Up next, we'll take a look at local weather conditions with Brittany Williams, so stay with us. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest. A magical place to enjoy with your family. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back to News About Asta. This weekend, we finally got some cool weather. So let's go to weather anchor Brittany Williams and see what's up. Thanks, you guys. This morning, we were under a tornado watch, which led us to experiencing some early morning thunderstorms with a high of 89 degrees. And although the weather seemed to have cleared up a bit this afternoon, there is a 100% chance of rain throughout the day, so expect some showers. Tonight, we can expect for the temperature to drop down to a low of 59 degrees with a 70% chance of rain. Afterwards, leaving us with clear, cool night skies. Tonight's humidity level will be at 89% with winds going about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, we can look forward to a bright sunny sky with highs cooling off to 79 degrees. The humidity level will drop down to a low of 59% with winds going about 5 miles per hour. There will be a 0% chance of rain tomorrow, so we can act as if today's gloomy weather never happened. Although the rain may have been un unexpected, it has brought us a couple pros for today. The rainy weather seems to have cooled down our UV index down to about a seven on the 12 point scale. That still calls for use of a light SPF of 30 for those who burn easily. 
Fortunately enough, today's rain has washed our pollen count down to a low of 2.8 on the 12-point scale. And that's all I have for the weather report. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Brittany. When we come back, Tevin Williams will have our local sports report, so stay with us. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you free GED classes. Peach. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Welcome back. Now let's go to Tevin Williams for our local sports. Tevin? Thank you, ladies. The Thomasville University women's golf team is hosting its last day of their Invitational today. The Invitational has been held at the Kinderloo Golf Course in Valdosta and has been going on since Sunday. The women's golf team has been doing well this season and hopes to continue their success today. With the last day of the Invitational being held today, the Lady Nighthawks are planning on continuing to strive for success today, despite the weather. Moving on to more Thomas University sports, the men's soccer team will host the Johnston & Wales soccer team in Thomasville Wednesday. The men's soccer team will be playing the opponent at Wednesday at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Hoping for a win, the men's soccer team has been doing extremely well this season with only one loss and two ties. The men's soccer team has been doing extremely well this season with all of their wins and is planning on continuing their success with their match on Wednesday. The Lowndes County Vikings football team will play Lee County this Friday and is showing that they are coming for a win. They have only one loss this season against Colquitt County and are, playing on winning, are now planning on winning against Lee County this Friday. The game will be played at 7 at night at Lee County in Leesburg. Let's show the Lee County Trojans how we do it in Titletown people by showing our support. And finally in sports, our Valdosta State University Blazers did in fact show up and show out this weekend with a 40-6 win over the University of West Georgia Wolves. The West Georgia Wolves were undefeated all season until the Blazers put a smackdown on the team this past Saturday. The Blazers started off the game a little bit slow, but came through in the end. And that is all I have for everyone in sports today. I will see all of you on Thursday. Now back to you ladies at the news desk. Thanks, Tevin. Want to learn about the sweet side of chemistry? That's coming up next. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Valdosta State University. Encouraging. In-depth inquiry. Hands-on experience. Service and involvement. And a global view. While offering a beautiful residential campus, over 100 fields of study, graduate and online degrees, and championship athletics. All in a warm and friendly community. Get connected and involved. Do more, become more. Valdosta State University. Welcome back to News Valdosta. 
Science Saturdays is a program exploring all aspects of math, science, and engineering. The College of Arts and Sciences and the Department of Chemistry at Varasa State present Science Saturdays at Bailey Science Center. The sweet side of chemistry will include activities such as exploding gummy bears, the chemistry of cotton candy, the construction of edible molecules, and a candy volcano. This will be held this Saturday from 9 until noon. Although this is targeted towards middle grade students, this event is free and open to the public. Valdosta State University's Music Scholarship Alliance will host Pops in the Park from 6 to 8 o'clock Thursday night. This event will feature performances including VSU's Street Drum Band, directed by Paul Campiglia, and the new Jazz Ensemble, directed by Dr. Joran Kane, and many more. Proceeds from Pops in the Park will benefit scholarships for students studying in the Department of Music at VSU. To purchase tickets or make a table reservation, you can call the College of the Arts Outreach Office. Tickets will also be available at the door. General admission tickets are $15 for adults, $8 for students and senior citizens, and free for children ages 12 and under. That's it for our program today. Thanks for watching News Valdosta. I'm Robin Carter. And I'm Camille Pollitt. We'll see you again tomorrow.